is the ripening result. That is that imprint that, that determines what you are going to be reborn as. That determines where you will be reborn. In what form. Uh, let's keep it simple. The things that you can see as a human or as an animal. Huh? Yeah, the thing is there's noise coming from here. Do we need it? Do we need the air? No. We don't need it. So why don't we switch it off? similar to the to the cause or to the action. Yeah. So that means if for example you have lots of killing seeds from 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 having killed, you will have a short life, you will be very sick and you will probably be in the danger of being killed and be killed. Not just in one lifetime but maybe in a few lifetimes, who knows? Uh, stealing like you work a lot but you always lose everything. So that can be let's say somebody steals from you or you just lose it. It's like if you're a farmer and your crops always get destroyed, for example. That could be another way, yeah? Like talking about negative acts. Sexual misconduct is clear, like your, your relationships will be very disharmonious, it will be very, very difficult to keep harmony. Not just your sexual relationships, but also your relationships with friends and so on. And so on, so it's kind of easy to... This one is easy to understand. Um, what is more difficult to understand is that we create a habit. So that is also a consequence of doing actions. So this is nice, then we can see we can change, we can change these habits. You know, we're not totally prisoners. And what it makes, this knowledge that I don't have complete control over my mind. I have decided to be a good person yet I don't succeed, then when we understand that karma ripens also on the level of imprints, we're not so judging towards ourselves. We're not beating ourselves up. Because when you start with spiritual practice, the first thing is to you learn to let go of identifying with your negative emotions. You have them, but they're not you. And you start to really look for the good side, to look for that spaciousness, to look for that goodness. Yeah? This is so important because otherwise, you see, when you meditate a lot, <laughs> this fly really likes me. So when you meditate a lot, all the dirt is coming out because the mind becomes more relaxed. And when you calm, the subconsciousness feels confident to let it come up. Whereas before, it's all sitting there and hiding, and then it can transform into sick body sicknesses. It can it transform into depression, and like that. So when it's coming out, it's actually a good sign. Very often, people think when they start meditating that they're not doing the right thing because they have so many negative emotions coming up. They're angry. All of a sudden, you know, this big wave of desire coming and not being able to let go. But it means the mind is cleansing itself. It lets it come out. And since we are sitting in meditation or in retreat, you're not doing anything. So we're not creating a new habit. Also aggression. It's, it's perfect because that is what you're working with in your meditation. Is what you work, you learn to not to identify with the negative emotions. And you learn to let go. And to just let them be. And then you see their impermanence. If you're not feeding them with thoughts, and if you're not resisting them, and you just let them be, the thing is, you have already made the step out of your emotion because now you're in your mindfulness looking at the, at the emotion. If you stay inside your negative emotion, what happens is like that negative emotion is glued to the outside object, and it's like pouring fuel on fire because you, you see the negative sides when you're angry and you repeat them and you repeat them and you repeat them. So anger becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. 
When you take your mind away from the object and you just put your mindfulness, your awareness, on the, on the negative emotion, how does it feel, where does it sit, is it hot, is it cold, you do all these analyses um, by itself, it dies down. Because the, it is as if you, when you have a mirror here, it's as if you're taking away the mirror and there's nothing here anymore. It's nothing that reflects. Yeah? And awareness is neutral, it doesn't, it just looks. That's very difficult. So this, that's why we have to develop this technique and this habit of being mindful, not only on your cushion, but also in daily <coughs> life. Because, you know, when you're fairly well and spacious and open, you don't need to be attentive, it's fine, everything goes well, somebody bumps into you, you say, oh, I'm sorry, or they say sorry, no big deal, nothing matters, but when you're already coming out of the house and you're angry, somebody makes a mistake or bumps into you, you explode in that person's face. Why? Because you were not aware that already at home, you were angry. So you have, when you look in the mirror in the morning before you go out of the house, how many people get out of the house not looking in the mirror before you go out? Actually, From bed to out to your workplace, you're not looking in the mirror? Really? Every morning? Yeah, sometimes, but come on. I mean, again, I'm not sure if you're aware of what you're saying. You don't have a mirror in your bathroom? I'm not saying the long mirror, I'm saying the face in your bathroom. Huh? Yeah. You look at that. You can make an experiment because I was once, I was in a, in a place where there were no mirrors. And whatever the mind is used to, it is so amazing because it was a retreat place, they took away all the mirrors. So I was brushing my teeth. And I'm not, I, I see my face in the mirror, but I'm not looking because I have nothing to arrange. <laughs> so, um, so I was looking up and I saw my face in the mirror, even though there was no mirror. So there you see when the mind is familiar to something, when it expects something, for the first moment it is there, and then you go, oh no, there's no mirror. And then the face disappears. It's quite amazing. So this is what you study with meditation and mindfulness and all this. You see that whatever you don't, you stop believing everything you see. And you definitely stop believing everything you think. Then all of a sudden we see that kind of rubbish that is coming up. So you have a mirror in your bathroom where you usually check how you look, no? Yeah. Some people know, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, with me, it could well be that I have something in my teeth or whatever, so I don't look. So please tell me, if, if it disturbs <laughs> you that I have a little bit of uh, lettuce in my, or spinach in my teeth, if it does disturb you, tell me. If it doesn't disturb you, you don't need to tell me. I'm not embarrassed if you tell me. See, we, out there we talked about communication. Well, where is, where is, which one did we talk about communication? Anyway, we talked about communication. We said how difficult it is to when you have to when we have to say something that is a bit unpleasant to say. Even that we can't say. You know, even that we think, oh, how am I going to tell her now that she's got something in her teeth, isn't it? Or when we say, we say very quick and kind of shh. Mm -hmm. It's so stupid. <laughs> yeah. So you can you, we can make agreements. You can tell your friends if I have something in my teeth, please tell me because I'd rather have teeth that are totally white all the time, you know, it's not natural. Your teeth, as you get older, in general, they get colored. But as long as they don't hurt, what's the big deal? You see, society tells us all kinds of things. You have to be slim and fit until you're old. Your teeth have to be white. There should be no wrinkles. There should be this and you How many people tell you, well, hey, you better start working with your mind now because when you're old, you won't be able to do it anymore. <laughs> How many people tell us that? And we all know that these outside things, they're not giving us what they promised. Still, we fall for it. Still, when you have a softer maybe who, is, who doesn't care about how she looks and all this, and you see her and then you think, hey, softer, you should take better care of yourself. You should wear better clothes. You know that makes the shape a little bit, hide a little bit, that we got a bit 
heavier and all this. Let her be. If she's comfortable in that clothes, let her be, be in these clothes. So what? You know? Because my Safta, if it would be somebody else's Safta, you wouldn't care. <laughs> yeah? What do you care what other people wear? Isn't it? Always this thing wanting to correct you. Leave them alone. Look after yourself. If you think that you become a better person because you wear nice clothes, well, you, sorry, you're mistaken. <laughs> Not true. So, what you have to put on your mirror, like, don't just fix the outside. Also fix the inside. Before you get out of the house. You have a very, like, let's say, you look in the mirror, you see a spot somewhere. Ah, you go like this. Yes? Of course. That's the first thing you do. So you try to look attractive and clean and all this. But do you ever look at the state of your mind when you go out of the house? No. So then something happens, you explode and you wonder, hey, what, what happened? And then you know, well, I wasn't in a good state already when I came out of the house. So that's why I got angry now. You see, anger very often rises not because we want it to arise. It arises because we're tired and stressed and feel incompetent and um, because we had an unhappy mind already in the morning. An unhappy mind is a very good fertile ground for anger. So then when somebody gets angry at you and you shout back at them, you think that will help them to create a happy mind? You think so? So why do you shout back at them? Why do you show your ugly face when they're angry at you? Why? Because we think it will help, unfortunately. That's why we do it. Yeah. So when you feel your mind is unhappy, what do you do? Do you have, you know, when there's dirt, okay, I use soap. But with the mind, what kind of soap can we use? Do we have mental soap for the mind? Breathe. Hmm? Breathe. Okay, breathe. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's the promise of mindfulness. Just breathe and then you'll be okay. Yeah. Not really. Sorry. It will lead you there, yeah, if you're very experienced, but it's not as simple as that. We need something quicker. <laughs> we need something quicker. We need to, you know, you can't breathe for half an hour and wait until you can't. Then you're half an hour late for work. I'm talking about something fast. You need something quick. So what was that? What's the quick method to make you happy? <laughs> yeah, for example, don't breathe. And then when you can breathe in again, you feel like, wow, I can breathe. You start to notice what it means to be able to breathe. That's very good. Much <laughs> better not it was a joke. It wasn't a joke. It's a good method. It's a good method. Then you appreciate that you can breathe. And so I don't oh, have to go back to that boring breath again here. Yeah? Okay, don't breathe. And then breathe, then you appreciate it. Gratitude, appreciation. So, very consciously, find something that, one thing you can appreciate in your life. My car works, for example. Imagine what that day would be if your car doesn't start. Yeah. We call this reflection on precious human reproof. <coughs> reflection on how much we have, instead of concentrating on what we don't have. And immediately lifts up your mind. You know, having people that allow you to like them. It's amazing. It's amazing. Because this is where our happiest feelings come from. When we feel connected to somebody, when we feel understood, when we feel appreciated. So just having them, just having these people, because you could have absolutely nobody. Isn't it? Can you imagine your life you don't, nobody allows you to like them, how lonely you will get. Do we ever appreciate these people? No, we want them to like us, but we don't need. All you need is to like them and then you're happy. This is why they say you don't need to change people. You only have to like them. Then you can be so of wanting to change them. So this is one thing, when you, you have to know these methods 
or, or this message in order to create a happy mind right that moment by changing, reframing or changing the story or changing channel, okay? I think the two ladies there at the back are very hot, isn't it? Are you suffering from heat? Okay, so you could think it could be much worse. <laughs> think about the summer, you know, a few weeks ago. If we would have been here a few weeks ago, it would have been much, much worse. But then you would still suffer mentally, but the mind starts to relax. Also, stop thinking the aircon should be put on. It will not be put on. <laughs> because as long as you think it should be put on, you suffer that it's not put on. If you're not, it's broken. Okay, the aircon breaks. There's nothing we can do with it, and we relax. But otherwise, we make the mind really, really tight about this thing. It should be, it should be cooler. But it's not, and then we, we accept. We start to take these little things to become more courageous. Instead of always changing outside, we just sit and we say, well, it won't kill me. And then what happens? We become stronger, more patient, because we practice patience. We become more courageous and we think, oh, actually, I can bear it. Whereas if we go and change outside conditions all the time, all the time, all, we're still not comfortable. Because you could always be more comfortable. Yeah? So this is it. So this is also part of your spiritual practice, just to bear what is there. If it's not life-threatening, then you relax with that. Relaxing with things that you have and that, is, that you want to do, that's easy. But we also learn to relax with things that we can't have and that we would like to have. Yeah. So knowing about, knowing about your um, negative reactions, although you don't want to have them, knowing that it's a habit that I have created, that can help you not to feel bad about it. But it doesn't mean then you say, oh, okay, there's nothing I can do about it. It means habits can be changed. How can they be changed? By being mindful of them. By watching what is going on. This is where the mindfulness and the breathing meditation comes in. You learn to just watch. And first you just watch your breath, because the breath is always there. And then you can slowly, slowly widen up a little bit and see the state of mind. And I don't know if any of you have made the, the experience already, just watching the state of mind, it changes. How many of you have, have made that experience? Yeah. Do you, you, you don't have to trust me, but do you trust all these people? Huh? When they say that. Don't trust them. Try it out. But when we have a majority saying, yes, it works, we have more interest and we have more faith. I know that faith also is a difficult word to use because it has to do with religion. Faith is for the stupid who don't know, isn't it? For the simple-minded people, they don't know, so they have faith. Well, we're all simple-minded. I mean, we all believe things that we don't know. How many of you know, really know that there's a North Pole? What? North Pole, where there's full of ice and penguins and icebergs. How many of you really know it? If I would have asked you that out there, would you also have not reacted? How would you have, how would you have answered? If I would have said, do you know that this is the North Pole? What would you have said? Of course. Yes, of course. Are you sure? Have you been there? No. We've seen pictures. We've seen movies. Maybe we met people who were there and we trust them. You see, most of the things we think we know, we don't know them, which is not bad. So karma is a bit the same thing. We know about, we hear about it, we know about, maybe we trust the Buddha, we take it on board and then we start to experience with it. And we see, oh, it actually works. Because it makes me become an ethical person. And being an ethical person, when you choose to be an ethical person, not because you're forced, that creates immediately what? Huh? Nothing? Quiet. Huh? Quiet. Quiet. Space. I didn't harm anybody today. How wonderful. We don't appreciate.
appreciated. We always want to be the big hero and helping others and making wonderful things and all this. Imagine the fact in the evening you come home, you haven't harmed anybody. How wonderful that is, especially when you drive. You could have killed somebody with your car, a cat, a dog, a fox, a child, but you didn't. Do you ever appreciate that fact? Good. Good if you're conscious of that. You, know? you could have hurt somebody with your speech today. You didn't. How wonderful. See, it's, I, I really don't understand what well, I understand, but it's being ethical. It would be such a win-win situation. It makes you feel better. It makes the people that you have to deal with much better. They would trust you because you're not lying and not cheating and not killing and all this. They would like you because it's much easier to like ethical people than unethical people. They would respect you. They would appreciate you. You will get anything you want. But we think it's insignificant because we want to be the big hero who does big things. But this is how you start your spiritual practice. That's the fundament, is being ethical. Otherwise your mind will never become the Sanskrit word for ethical conduct is shila, meaning cool. You have a mind that is cool, fresh, sane, and calm, and spacious. It's nature. Even somebody accuses you. I had one father once, he came and he was devastated. He said he's accused of having abused his eight-year-old daughter sex sexually. Not raped her, but because they're divorced, and um, so he, she goes to him like two weekends in a month or something like that and the mother kind of started to make, uh, when she comes home, she can't sleep, she pees in her bed and uh, so there must have, something must have happened with you and all this. And he says, I don't know what is true, yeah? he says she manipulated the girl into telling stories but it's not true and he was crying, he was devastated. And I said, you know what, I know you're the state you're in now. And I said, I don't know, to, I don't know you. I said, maybe it's true, maybe it's not true. You know, I can't say, yes, I believe you didn't do anything. But in order to help you, what you could think, that it could be worse. And he said, no, no, it cannot be worse. I said, yes, it could be worse. You could have done it. You know, we think that the worst thing is being accused of something that we haven't done. No, it's not. The worst thing is being accused of something that we have done. If you haven't done it, you haven't done it. At least you can very calmly, every time you're being asked, you can say, no, I did not do it. You don't need to get angry. But if you've done it, then you need to hide and you need to lie and there's more stories and there's the bad conscience and all this. We feel terribly hurt when we get accused of something that we haven't done. It's past karma when you have done something and you weren't accused. This is what's coming up here. And this is how karma works. Uh, and another result is the environmental result. So we have four results. The environmental result. The result where in what environment you were born. So I know it's difficult to say in this country because what you're hearing is that I say it's your own fault. But it's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the result of killing is being born in a country where there's a lot of conflict and in order to survive, you have to fight. That is the result of the karma of killing. How do you feel when I tell you these things? You know, the Swiss people, they take it very easily because uh, there's no conflict going on. How do you, how can you take this? Can you take this with not hearing that I'm saying it's your fault? Can you maybe understand that I feel a lot of compassion being in such a terrible situation where you don't know how to get out of it? It's terrible. Yeah, it like Same thing. And actually they say it themselves, this is the thing. You know, like when Gajan Rinpoche came to Israel, how many of you have been in that teaching? When he came the first time, he was in Tuval. He started his talk by saying, hello, my name is Gajan Rinpoche for I can't remember, 13 years. I was in the prison of the, I was in prison of the Chinese army. They tortured me, uh, but that's my own karma that got purified through that. 
This is why they don't feel angry. They're still trying to get their country back if they could. They're not giving up of wanting their own country back, but there's no anger towards the Chinese in the older lamas who have <coughs> these teachings. So it's not just the Jews, excuse me. In that case, for karma, you are not the chosen ones, okay? <laughs> Don't feel so exclusive here. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. Everybody who has a mind experiences the results of their past karma. When it is a group like this, that means that the people of this group, they have created the same kind of karma but not necessarily at the same time or in the same group, but the same action. Because the same as with seeds in the garden, you know, they're not like one flower produces seeds. So some of these seeds, you, throw, you give them the conditions to ripen immediately, they ripen, but others you keep in a bag. So that means they don't need to have created the karma, the Tibetans, to being invaded by the Chinese army at the same time, and not as, as Tibetans. They could have been Chinese, or whatever, or other aggressors, or Genghis Khan, or the Russian, I don't know. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Do you understand? I don't understand. What is it that you don't understand? What you said, the last part of the... With the collective karma. Okay, collective. yeah, collective karma. When there's a group like the Tibetans, <coughs> experiencing like living in a country and the Chinese, a Chinese invasion. Do you, do you know the, the, the situation of the Tibetans? The Chinese army that invades them. It is the, the negative karma of the Tibetans that live there that is ripening so that the Chinese can invade that country. Otherwise they wouldn't have succeeded. Now, but the, the actions that were created so that this result can come about was not necessarily created as a group. And also not in the same heaviness, because it, you see that you, you can take the situation here, maybe it's easier because you have experience. Some people experience the situation here is terrible. Some others might be even happy that finally we have a country back and we're going to fight for it. Oh, 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 you know, creates a lot of funny views that it's ours and blah, blah, blah. blah. Others suffer more, less. This is all. We all have still in that collective karma, each one still has individual uh, karmic, karmic results coming up. Right? Okay, so, so do you understand what I mean? Each one experiences it differently. Like we all have the collective karma to be reborn as humans. And karmic actions in order to be reborn as humans is keeping ethical conduct. Practicing generosity, patience, and in order to listen to spiritual teachings, you need to have made aspirations to meet these teachings again in future lives. This is why everybody sees these posters and flyers on the internet or somewhere, but not everybody comes. Because in some people it wakes something up from the past. They have already kind of made contact with this. For other people it was. They're not interested. Do you see what I mean? Is it more clear now? I would like to ask about the Holocaust, for instance. Same thing. Same thing. So, so Same many thing. people were involved in Same thing. <laughs> Same so thing. Much. And people also in the Holocaust, it wasn't just Jews, <coughs> it was gypsies and homosexuals and leftists also. Holland's. And let go. I mean, you, this is, it's too heavy to discuss it. There's still, you know, how many years now? Seven, seven, yeah, so, you know, Hitler is dead. Most of these Nazis are dead. Uh, most of the people who were in the Holocaust are dead. You don't need to forget about it. But you need to be able to let go and continue your life without that Holocaust hanging over your head. <coughs> and people, the system doesn't allow you to forgive. Because what happens? You still feel like the victim. You see, if, for non-Jewish people, nobody ever says, what about the Holocaust? But everybody, when they have something big happening in their country, they go, what about that? Karma is for everybody. But it's difficult.
to understand. And it's not saying it's their own fault. But the way they experienced the Holocaust also, some people came out really strong. I tell you, your country is the only country that has so many people over 100 years. Not, no other country has that. Why? Because it's people who have had very difficult lives. They, they became very strong. And the will to live is so strong. I'm not saying they're happy. I'm just saying they have long lives. Do you see what I'm saying? What came out of the Holocaust is the country of Israel. I don't think the UN would have said yes so quickly if they wouldn't have had a bad conscience about what happened in the Holocaust. This is, you know, it, it depends how you look at it. Yeah. I'm not judging, I'm not saying, I'm not anti-Semitist, I hope you see that. Um, for me, you're human beings, whether you're Jewish or not Jewish, religious, not, I really, to say it in a very gross way, I don't give a damn. Uh, I see human beings here, and I see that you, you carry very, very, very heavy packages. Yeah? On one hand, you still feel the victim because there is anti-Semitism. Yes, there is. Uh, some, some is kind of justified, I have to say. Um, but there is also anti-Islamism. There is anti-Buddhism. There is anti-homosexualism. There is anti financial Swissism. It's anti-ism everywhere. If you're not happy with what, the, what this person does, we, you, you throw them into a group, and then that's it. People are afraid of the Jews. Why? Because you're so bloody good. You're intelligent. You, are, you use your brain. You're good at what you're doing. You're conscientious. You are diligent. You are good. People are afraid of you. So stop being so good, maybe that will suit you. <laughs> wherever you look, you know, wherever you look, where significant things are happening, Jews are involved. Financial, art, uh, everywhere. Literature. Yeah? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So, it's not easy to be Jewish. It's not easy. Isn't it? And it's definitely not easy to be Israeli today. You go on a holiday, people ask you where you're from, like outside the country, what happens? Has it happened to you? What happens? They start to attack you. Not because of what you are, but because of your country. It's terrible. They are Israelis who don't even say they're from Israel. That's very heavy package that you carry. And then, say, how do you react? Now, how do you react to these accusations? Hmm? The process. Huh? We get insulted, then we get angry, yeah. and then we get defended, and, yeah. and then we try to explain, and then we realize there is no sense we can change. It just mind. makes it worse. Instead of saying, Yes, I'm from Israel, I know what's happening, and I'm very sad about it, and I wish I could change it. Conversation finished, aggression finished. You know, when I came here for the first time, people asked me, you're from Switzerland, no, that, yeah. What do you think about Swiss pants who took the money from the Jews in the second <laughs> So I said, oh, oh, to be honest, I never thought about this question, because one thing, I was born in 1950, that the war was finished. The other thing is, yes, I'm not happy with this. I think it's rotten that they did it. But even if I would have been living then, do you think as an individual I could have done something? The population didn't know. It was the people in advance that knew. Though if I am, then I, if I want to be honest now, then I didn't say it because I didn't think so far. I don't know if I would have been a bank director with a greedy mind, I probably would have taken it. You see, injustice, if it is to our favor, it is very difficult not to want it. Do you see what I mean? If the injustice is not in our favor, then of course we scream. But the moment it would become uncomfortable and expensive for us to be just, then we have some hesitation of being just. Maybe then we're not so disturbed about doing justice anymore. This is our problem. You know, when the Swiss bank system with the secrecy and all that, when it was abolished, 
I was very happy. Why? Because I don't have any money. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, if I would have had a lot of money that I'm hiding, I don't know if I would have been so happy. Probably not. So it's good to see how we are. It's good to be honest. Okay? But I'm not saying the Holocaust is like the people who are sitting in the audience, it's their fault. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that these mind states, I mean, these mind streams, who then had Jewish bodies kind of being born in Jewish culture, in another lifetime, they were Nazis. That's what I'm saying. So if I was born Jewish, mm. I would always be Jewish? No. Would you like to? <laughs> <laughs> would you like to? Being Jewish doesn't mean he creates the karma of being Jewish next time. But if the karma is collected, yeah. and this is my first time as a Jewish, maybe, so maybe I'm not. not uh, part of the karma. Yeah. So why, what do you think? No. I mean, you might be born Palestinian next time. Probably. <laughs> experience it as a group. It's not a result. You're not, you, you, know, you cannot... <laughs> the, the collective karma is usually... You, the collective karma as a group is usually a result, not a cause. It doesn't mean if you create... It doesn't mean that, that everybody was in the Holocaust were kind of Nazi type people at the same time. One thing also that I forgot to say, there is four, four kind of characteristics in karma, okay? Um, karma is definite, meaning a positive action will give a positive result. A negative action will give a ne negative result. The result, not the reaction to the result, but the result. And karma increases, that means from a very small action, it can have a big result. This is why negative karma is kind of really um, dangerous because we neglect it. We say, eh, it's just a small action. Same as if you put one tiny seed and it meets the conditions, it makes many, many, many more seeds. There's no plant who only has one seed. So from one action, you can have many, many results. This is what it means when the karma increases. And karma is never lost, meaning, not like seeds. Seeds, after a certain number of years, they can be destroyed. Karmic seeds can also be destroyed, but you need the conditions to destroy them. Like, if you want to destroy negative karmic seeds, you can do purification. I come to that, what it means. And if you, if, and the positive karmic seeds, we destroy them by being angry. Angry at having been positive. You see, the friar, when you have a fryer feeling, you destroy so many positive karmic seeds that you have created in the past because you feel stupid. That's why I keep harping on about this fryer sin to me in Israel. It's the only country where people are so afraid of having to give in and being flexible. The pride. Huh? Is that right? No, uh, the German word for fryer, it means fry. But it means, no, no, wait, 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 but it has a connotation. A man who's looking for a woman, that is a friar. A friar goes to the, to, in ancient times, goes to the father to ask for the hand of the daughter because he's fry. Today, a friar is somebody who goes to a prostitute. In German. In German. And I think the word comes from Yiddish. Okay, I, I looked it up in the Wikipedia because I was, I was curious. They say it comes from Russian, which means something like friar or something like this, which means a mark. Like a thief has seen, oh, that one is stupid enough to leave her back there in the garden. I'm marked, and then they come and get it. So I don't know which is true. But anyway, a friar is somebody who is lacking something. He lacks a wife. So he's free. He's free to be married. But that's the that's the that's the meaning or the definition 
of a friar, somebody who lacks a woman, somebody who lacks a wife. So it could be because you lack the victory as a friar. Yeah. So like that. So don't be so afraid to be a friar. Somebody has to be the friar at this point. So it's okay. And if you fight and then you cheat and you lie, this this creates karma to be the friar in the future. Whereas you say, okay, let the karma ripening now, because this is how karma exhausts itself, by ripening. The seed in the garden, if you, get, get, if you give the plant, that seed will never, that seed will never give a result anymore. So you can either let the plant grow and then it makes many, many more seeds, or you can say, no, I don't want this. You pull it out and that's it. Lineage cut. But if you leave your negative emotions in your mind and creating actions again and again and again and again, it creates a lot more seeds. If you cultivate the positive seeds in your heart, then you will have very positive crops and you will not have to worry about being safe in the future. Yeah. You see, we, whatever happens to us now, we have no control. We can control or train how we react towards the whole thing but we cannot control what happens to us. See? Totally uncertain. Even the mind states, you know, outside everything goes well and all of a sudden you fall into depression. Isn't it? We all know it. Or you wake up with a really foul mood. No. But everything is okay. That's negative karma ripening. Now also something that is good to know um, is the heaviness, of the heaviness kind of we talked about. Something that is good to know. Um, I forgot my point. What else is good to know with the karmic stuff? I have to talk about something else and then maybe it will come back. Oh. You mean this before uh, result to karma? Yeah, the ripening result which determines right. your next tree's rebirth. It's called ripening right. result. Because that we have a human body is, is a karmic result of being ethical, uh, ethical, generous, patient, and, have, and that's it. To be able to have an open mind towards spiritual practices, that means we have made aspirations wanting to do that. Yeah, that's the ripening result. Then there's the result which is similar to the cause. The same thing is happening to you. That's one part of it, and the next part of it that you create the habit. And then there's the environmental result. You see, being born in Switzerland, to a family who has money, you have so many outside conditions to be happy. How many of you have lived in Switzerland? Hmm? Nobody, yeah. Do you think Swiss people are really happy? Yeah. No. So if you think, oh, I would live in Switzerland, I would be very happy, nope. happy ever after. It's not true. How would you describe Swiss people? Please be honest. I see whether you see them in the right way. Because as an outsider, you see them much better than as an insider. How would you describe them? You can't hurt me, it's fine. I know how I, <laughs> I, know how I am. It's really hard to, dis to, to describe them. To describe, uh, well, try. People, but hard is okay. Tight. Yeah, frightened, a lot of fear. Yeah, not not much humor. Cold. Cold. Emotion, emotional fear of opening up. You see, here in Israel, there's a lot of aggression everywhere. It's like I, I know it, so I can't prepare. So I'm not afraid anymore. At the beginning, I was afraid. I thought, like, God, what's happening with these guys? How can I react? How can I behave so that they don't get angry? And I saw that no matter how, how I behave, they still get angry. <laughs> <laughs> like just this thing, you phone somebody and they go, Allo! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not the right one. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> okay. Um, so now, now I understood. But, so this is one part, okay? But the other